Hot Cinema Recap here. Today I'm going to explain a sci-fi and romance film Womb, released in the year 2010. Let's get started. Rebecca, one of our protagonists, talks to her baby while caressing her belly and begins to remember her childhood. As a child, she visited her grandfather's house on the shores of the beach and met a boy named Thomas, for whom she became very curious. One day he came to pick her up at her house and they both went out cycling. From that moment on, they became very close and began to spend every day together. There was even a day when Rebecca pretended to be asleep so she could sleep over at Tommy's house. By the end of their vacation, Rebecca told Tommy that she was going to live in Japan and he kissed her goodbye, which caused the girl to leave the place with a blush on her face. That same night, while taking a bath, Rebecca receives a phone call from Tommy, who tells her that he is going to the port to say goodbye to her. Rebecca waits for him very excitedly, but Tommy never arrives, so her trip on the boat is very sad. Twelve years later, Rebecca returns to the harbor town and visits her grandfather's house, where she notices the passage of time more than ever. She then goes to Thomas's house to meet him, but his mother tells her that the boy no longer leaves there. She asks him if he still remembers her, and the woman replies that Tommy insisted them for years to go to Japan. She then gives her the address of the boy's new home. Upon arriving, Rebecca enters and sees a woman lying on the floor reading a book, and as she is about to leave, Thomas appears and the two recognize each other almost immediately. Later, the three of them have breakfast together and the woman who had appeared earlier reveals that she is Tommy's girlfriend as she leaves in a jealous rage. The next day, Tommy calls Rebecca from outside, but she surprises him by arriving from behind. They spend some time talking on the beach and Tommy tells her that he's broken up with his girlfriend now that Rebecca is back in town. Later, they go to dinner at Rebecca's house. She asks him about the surprise Ahay had prepared the day before. She travels to Japan and Tommy shows her a matchbox with a snail they had collected when they were little. Then Rebecca asks him why he didn't go to see her off, to which Tommy only replies that this trip was too early and he overslept. The next day they both have fun running on the beach and Tommy tells her that he will have a trip in a few days. Rebecca replies that she wants to go too, but Tommy doesn't want to give her too many details about it. Later, at Tommy's house, he explains that he has plans to sabotage a polluting company with his group of environmental activists. When Rebecca asks him what the plan is, Tommy takes her to a room where he has a huge cockroach farm and tells her that they will carry all these insects in backpacks to release them in the fact Tommy says goodbye to his parents and then sets off on the long-awaited trip with Rebecca. As they travel to their destination, Rebecca asks Tommy to stop the car for a few moments to pee. When Rebecca gets out to do her business, she hears the sound of a crash and is perplexed. When she turns around, she gets back in the car and stares at the lifeless body of her great love. A few days later, Rebecca finds a note in the matchbook Tommy had left her. The note said that he would wait all his life for her to return. Afterwards, Rebecca wakes up looking at pictures and videos of Tommy on her computer. The next day she goes to his funeral and upon seeing a flower, she gets an idea. Rebecca finds Tommy's father crying and goes over to comfort him. Later, he and his wife go to Rebecca's house. Tommy's mother asks the protagonist to explain the reason for her invitation and she shows her a form for genetic cloning by pregnancy, as well as explaining that it would be she herself who would give birth to the child Tommy. Tommy's mother explains to Rebecca that they are atheists and that they also raise their son that way, but that even they believe that this is immoral and that they must accept the fate that has been dealt to them. Rebecca replies that it is that same luck that gives them the opportunity to bring Tommy back and leaves the woman in check and her husband begins to think so too. They both leave the place and leave Rebecca alone. The next day, Rebecca meets with Ralph, Tommy's father. He accepts her proposal and tells her to raise Tommy in that town since he loved the sea and will surely love it again when he is born again. In addition, he tells her that they are going to leave the city and tells her that she still has time to change her mind. But Rebecca doesn't think twice and undergoes the medical procedure to give birth to the love of her life. On her way out, she is spotted by the woman who used to be Tommy's girlfriend. After a while her belly grows and she is only a few days away from Tommy's birth. So she goes to visit his grave and smiles, knowing that he will have a second chance to live again. Days later, Rebecca is hospitalized to give birth to Tommy by cesarean section. Then she walks with a baby on the beach and by the time she realized it, Tommy was already the same age he was when they met. While playing with some blankets, Tommy asks his mother about his father, but Rebecca doesn't know how to tell him the whole truth. That's why, after a few seconds of silence, she tells him that his father died in a car accident. One day she finds Tommy with his friend Eric and a little girl named Dima. She behaves a little strangely and Rebecca invites her to her house so she can play with Tommy, but the girl refuses. When Dima leaves the place, Tommy and Eric start making fun of her for being a copy. 
The next day, Rebecca is invited to a meeting with Dima's mother and her teacher. The women ask Rebecca not to confuse her daughter with their invitations and to try to keep her son away from Dima, as she has been bullied a lot by all the children in the class. Rebecca is very confused by all this and the women notice, so the teacher intervenes and begins to explain that Dima is the result of artificial insemination. Her case is similar to his, as the woman gave birth to her own mother. Rebecca tries to process all this information and apologizes to the women. They accept her apology as they understand Rebecca. She then leaves. The next day she organizes a birthday party for Tommy, so she decorates the whole house and waits for the other children together, but they never arrive, which causes Rebecca to burst into tears because she can't tell her son the truth. Days later, they both go to the beach and Tommy falls in love with the sea, as he used to do in the past. So Rebecca is moved back home. She gives him a toy dinosaur and he names it Boo Boo. One day, while watching the ocean from the shore, Rebecca and Tommy are interrupted by a boy named Mark, who introduces himself as their neighbor. He and Tommy become fast friends, even going to play with him at his house while Rebecca works on her computer. That same night, Tommy asks his mother if she was present at the time of his father's death, and she tells him the story a little nervously and emits information. The next day they both play wrestling on the beach and Tommy manages to beat her so he innocently tells her that now he could do whatever he wants with her, to which Rebecca gives into his wishes and encourages him to do whatever he wants. At that moment, Mark appears and Tommy leaves. In the evening, Rebecca enters her son's room and sends him off to bed. Time flies by and by the next scene, Tommy is an adult again and is already romantically involved with Monica, his girlfriend. This hurts Rebecca, who cannot explain her feelings to her son. He even asks his mother for permission for Monica to live with them. Rebecca accepts in spite of everything and the girl moves into the house. The first few days are a bit strange as the girl tries to get her mother-in-law to like her, but notices that she keeps some distance in the relationship. She even bakes a cake to try to make things better, but Rebecca doesn't eat it. One night, while pretending to be asleep, she overhears Monica telling Tommy that she must talk to his mother and must explain that he only loves her as his mother. So Rebecca notices that her feelings for her son are becoming more and more evident. The next day, Tommy comes over with Annette to joke with his mother, but the joke gets a little weird and they are both very embarrassed. Plus all this was seen by Monica. Upon entering the house, Monica tries to confront Rebecca, but she just evades the situation. As the days go by, things become untenable and the family and relationships become increasingly strained between everyone. The high point of this comes when Tommy's real mother shows up on the scene and is perplexed to see the exact replica of her son, but deep down she knows it's not really him. Tommy begins to despair and demands an explanation. But no one utters a word and the woman leaves with Rebecca. At night, Tommy wakes up and goes to his mother's room so that she can explain what is happening. But Rebecca does not give him any explanation and Monica starts calling him to go back to his room. So Tommy decides to go to the bathroom to be alone for a while. The next day, the three of them are having the tensest breakfast in the world and Rebecca can see that her son is very upset as he starts to get irritated trying to salt his food and hits all the things before leaving. The two women are left alone in the room and look at each other in confusion. Later, the two women start knocking on the bathroom door because Tommy locked himself in for a bath hours ago and still hasn't come out. Monica tells him that she will leave the place and he doesn't even answer. When leaving the bathroom, Tommy and Monica look at each other for a few moments and Monica leaves with all her things. At that moment, Tommy goes to Rebecca's room and again asks her to explain what is going on. Rebecca gets out of bed and tries to tell him everything from the beginning, but Tommy starts to get desperate and asks her to get to the point. Rebecca gets up and goes to get the computer that Tommy used in his past life. He sees all the pictures and videos and starts tying things together very quickly. He begins to rage at his mother and asks her who she really is, then despairs at not knowing who he really is and realizes that his whole life has been a lie and that his mother was actually the love of his life in his past life. He climbs into Rebecca's bed and they unload all the love and tension they had since he was little. When they finish, Tommy gathers all his things and says goodbye to Rebecca, calling her by name for the first time. The end. Thanks for watching.